Hello out there to you. Let's do a monopoly problem. We've got a monopolist, which just means a company that holds a monopoly. Marginal cost equals four. We're given fixed cost. Also suppose the demand curve is this. Okay. So what we want to do, uh, really I like to just answer the question, figure out what, what's going on before even looking at the questions, but I guess we can look at the questions first. What is the marginal revenue of the monopolist as a function of Q? So that basically means we need the marginal revenue of this uh, function, which is the partial derivative of the total revenue function. We'll do that one. Profit maximizing uh, quantity and price. So this is sort of the payoff to what we're up to. So we want to calculate the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And in this problem, we're told that marginal cost is four. So whenever we're going to find whatever that marginal revenue is, set it equal to four, solve for quantity, and then uh, we're going to mark up the price. So we'll plug that quantity back into this function. It'll give us a price, and that's the answer to that other one. The efficient price is going to be um, the place where the demand equals supposed to be D equals marginal cost, which in this case is going to be four. Okay. Then the dead weight loss, this is the, the difference between this quantity and price and this quantity and price. And then the monopoly profits at the profit maximizing price. We're going to take total revenue under the monopoly. We're going to subtract it from total cost, which in this case is going to be four times whatever the quantity is. Oops on that. So four times the quantity uh, and then so this would be minus so it's total revenue and then minus 48 because that's the fixed cost. Or you could just say we've got the, the total cost or the total variable cost, the cost that change minus the fixed cost minus total revenue. Okay, so what are we going to do here? All right, so what we want to do is we want to find, we have, we have to rearrange this to be a uh, what we call an inverse demand function and what that means if you ever hear an instructor say that it means that the, the price is on the left side we've isolated price and then we've got something 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 over here so to do that um, I'm going to rewrite this so it's a little easier for me rewrite it over here so I've got Q equals 12 and then it's got P over 2 it what I've got what I like better is one half p. This is the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to move that over there. One half. This is just algebra here. Um, p twelve minus q, and then I need to multiply, um, uh, really divide everything by one half, which is like multiplying by two. So if I multiply everything by two, this goes away, and this would be twenty four, and then this would be. Two Q. So th these are the same thing. If you want to prove that to yourself, you can you can graph it, but they are the same thing. Okay, so now I've got this. Um, total revenue is price times quantity. So I know what the price is. So for my total revenue function, I'm going to go 24. I'm going to multiply everything in here by Q. So 24Q minus uh, 2Q squared. Then to get the marginal revenue function, I want to go marginal revenue equal, I'm going to take the partial derivative with respect to Q. Okay, so partial derivative with respect to Q, this will be a constant. It'll just be 24 because this, this is one and then I'll subtract one from that and that makes it go away. And then minus 4Q. Now there's actually, if you look at the two, this function and this function, it's actually a trick. If you have a simple linear uh, demand function like this, inverse demand function, you can multiply whatever the coefficient is on that Q by two and you'll get the answer. All right, so now I've got marginal revenue and that, that's the answer to number one. So that is the marginal revenue function right there. Uh, next, for number two, I wanna set this equal to four. So MR equals MC. So MC is four, it really doesn't look very good. Let me, let me get okay, four. My hand is cold, so I'm getting some weird answers here. Okay, so four equals 24 minus 4q. This would be 4q equals 20, and then q 
equals five. Okay, so now I've got a quantity five. Then I want to plug this into, uh, you can either do the original demand function or the inverse demand function, either one, and we're going to solve for price. So I'm going to use the inverse demand function. So it'll be 24 minus, um, and it's, if I'm writing it all out, it's two times five. So that would be 10 and price is going to be 14. Okay, so this is the price and quantity combination for the monopolist. Um, I actually now know, I can skip ahead a little bit, um, I now know what, what all this is, what the monopolist profits are. So it would be 5 times 14, which I don't know in my head, 5 times 14 is 70. Okay, so this would be $70 of total revenue. Let me write that this way. So it would be P times Q uh, and then minus 4 times Q minus 48. This would be if you wrote out the whole thing. But anyway, so this would be 70 uh, minus 20 because that's 4 times 5 and then minus 48. So that would be 68. And so the monopolist profits would be 2. Woohoo. Well, it's positive. So that's good. I mean, that could be $2 million. It could be whatever. I don't know. Um, okay. So now we just need to figure out the efficient price. So this one, I'm going to use the, um, no, I'm not. Okay. So yeah, no, I am. I am. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to plug in. I've got demand equals four. So I'm just going to use this one right here. So for number three, I'm going to go 4 equals 24 minus 2q and send this over here. This would be 2q uh, and then this and this over here. And then quantity would be 10 and that would mean that the price would be 4 because in an efficient market, price is going to equal marginal cost. Okay. So more on that if you look at like perfect competition videos, whatever. So the efficient price and uh, quantity combination, 10, 10 units, and uh, I'm going to charge four. Okay, the deadweight loss for the monopolists maximizing profits. Okay, so it's, it's the difference between these two things. So it's going to be a triangle. You can see other videos where it's like um, graphed out, but it, it's, that's why I'm going to go one half here. Okay. So it's one half the difference in price. So the difference in price is 4 to 14. So really it would be 14 if I was writing out everything. 14 minus 4. And I'll multiply all of this with this right here. Uh, and then the difference in quantity. So it would be quantity 10 to quantity 5. So it would be 10 minus 5. 5, sorry about that. So then this would be 10 times 5, which is 50, and then half of that is 25. So the deadweight loss would be 25. And I get asked this question quite a bit, uh, what units are deadweight loss is. We're quantifying the, the amount of the market failure. So it, it's in whatever currency you're using. I guess in this one, we're using dollars. So that would be 25. So that's how to take apart uh, a simple question like this for an MBA class or a college level class.